Hello. You're watching GearWire.com, and I am Owen O'Malley, and we are at the Esquire uh, Ultimate Bachelor Pad at the Soho Muse in downtown New York. Uh, we're in New York for the 127th AES conference, and as you can see, I'm not holding our typical interview mic here. This is a Blue Encore 100. It's Blue's new uh, uh, stage dynamic microphone, uh, the first uh, in their series of their new series of live mics. Um, Blue had uh, an event to announce the Encore series here last night, which we missed. <laughs> so they were very nice to set it up for us today, um, and we'll be interviewing Skipper and Martins from Blue, uh, and uh, it should be a good time. So we're here in the music studio of the Esquire House at Soho Muse, downtown New York, and I'm here with Martins, Salspurens, and Skipper Wise, the founders of Blue Microphones, who were very kind to sit down and talk with us about this mic, the Encore 100. Um, so can you guys talk a little bit about uh, the design concept behind this line of microphones? Well, everything that we do at Blue has to have a personality. When you look at a Blue product and you see that microphone, you know it's from us because there's a certain style that we've worked on over 15 years. And it's making sure that it's unique in itself, of course, the sound has to be incredible. That's what we start with here at Blue from a technical standpoint. But there's also a branded image and a culture and a family of products that when you see our Robbie microphone preamplifier, if you take a look back here, we have our bottle microphone, our flagship, which uses nine interchangeable capsules for nine unique sounds. Now down to our Encore 100, which is our live dynamic microphone, which is at a $99 price point, but it doesn't sacrifice any of the care, the design, and the passion that goes into blue products just because the price point is lower. Can you talk a little bit about the, the, the capsule that's in this microphone and the, sort of the, the design technology behind it? Well, I'm going to let Martin talk a little bit about the technology, but I, I will tell you, we call it the Aria capsule. There's a creative division at Blue. Uh, where all our engineers are at. In fact, Martin and I are over there quite a bit working with the team. And they were responsible for the design of this microphone. And it is called Aria 51, <laughs> which is like <laughs> playoff of the Area 51. In fact, our art czar, Ken Niles, came up with the name. And he's got this great cartoon of a woman singing into a uh, spaceship. <laughs> But um, so it is, it is the first capsule to come out of ARIA 51, so we call it the ARIA Dynamic Capsule. And the technology behind it and the voicing of it is something that's very unique to Blue. We have a, an idea of tone that we have found to be popular with the users of our high-end condenser microphones. And we've noticed that they were clamoring for a sound that they could take on stage in the way that they record in the recording studio to be able to reproduce that live. And this is sort of a... I'd say a sampling of the, the most popular frequencies of our, of our mics, uh, specifically our Bluebird, which seems to be quite a popular microphone these days. And that is the tone of the capsule that went into this um, Encore 100. So certainly with Blue's reputation, you could have gotten away with a, a live dynamic microphone that was much pricier than this was. What was the impulse behind creating a microphone that was so uh, affordable comparatively? Um, well, after 15 years of doing this, um, a lot of the stuff amateurizes for us, our tooling, our knowledge, our efficiency as a company. Um, where if we would have done this microphone maybe five or six years ago, the price point might have been twice the amount. So um, we put things out when the time is right. It's not a matter of let's do a Me Too product, everybody's putting out this type of product, let's go ahead and rush that out to market. Uh, we put it out when it is a good deal for the consumer for our customer, as well as we know we can achieve the tonal and the aesthetic balance that we're looking for in a product and make sure it's affordable. So Martin, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the design of the capsule, what went into the design of the Encore series? Yes, but I'll be very brief because I don't want uh, to go too technical. We simply matched uh, the magnetic materials, uh, the weight of the coil, the membrane, uh, as Skipper uh, told earlier, uh, no, due to our previous experience. So there is, I, I would say, there is nothing magic, but under uh, this uh, capsule there is those 15 or maybe even more years of experience, uh, me as a technical and Skipper as from the musical standpoint. I mean, the capsule, the tone of what we do, it's an opinion. It's, it's just like as an artist creates a painting, they have their own style. And um, we have our own idea of what we deem to sound good. 
uh, we don't necessarily go out and say we sound better than others, but we know that there is a, um, a, se a set of ears and a um, years of experience in creating these tones. And we have found this through working with people. I came from a musical background. In fact, that's how I met Martin. Uh, I was on a and Capital, JVC, and I was on these audiophile labels uh, doing jazz here in the States. And in Europe, I happened to have a fluke and have a pop career over there. And that's where I met Martin doing a television show called Countdown. Um, but we were buying in those days old vintage microphones and rebuilding them so that they could function with, with the technology, the current technology of digital technology. Um, and after a while, we realized that everything that we had been doing really lent itself to creating a new product. And um, hence, our first microphone, which was the Blueberry, which was released um, in 1999. We had been doing work prior to that, but the first commercial product came out in 1999. And from there, we designed a series of products that we considered to be application-specific. In other words, what sound is, sounds good on a female voice? What sounds good on an acoustic guitar? What sounds good on a crunchy electric guitar playing through Marshall uh, amplifiers? And we created a, a series of products that we felt would capture the tone of what that instrument or artist needed. Um, and this is really what's become Blue today. Now, of course, going into the Encore 100 and 200 mics, um, we are now broadening out and taking what people are recording in the studio out to the live arena.